Considering the sage and the sword, what says the Troia, the Borg, Britain, and Brent, to Brondes and Askers, the talk that the tremors of Trezun there rocked was treated for his treachery. Hello everyone, my name is Froy, and in this video we will talk about Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. What I wanted to say is that we don't know who wrote Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, so he's usually referred to as the Gawain poet. We do think that the poet lived somewhere in Northumbria in the north of England because of the northern dialect he used. History Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is written in the Anglo-Norman period of literature in England. This period started in 1066 when William I of Normandy defeated the Anglo-Saxon king Harold II in the Battle of Hastings. After the victory of William the Conqueror, England came under Norman rule. These Normans came from the Normandy region in France and spoke the French language. This resulted in the English court and nobility being highly Frenchified by the Normans. During the centuries that followed, the English territory vastly increased. As you can see, most of France was under English control, but those overseas territories were eventually lost during the Hundred Years' War. During the Anglo-Norman period, the French culture was predominant in England, and, it, and at the time, Chrétien de Troyes and Marie de France were popular writers in France and thus in England. They introduced the genre of the romance. A romance is basically a long poem based on Celtic legends about knights with King Arthur in a leading role. It is a debate whether King Arthur actually existed, but he is a predominant figure in Celtic legend where he is said to be the last Celtic king, and he is commonly held to have this round table where all his knights are seated. Stylistic features Sir Gawain in the Green Knight is an example of what we call an alliterative verse. Let's look at some sentences to illustrate what that means. Was treated for his treachery, the truest on earth. A sentence where a specific sound is repeated multiple times we call an alliteration. In this sentence we can clearly see that the TR sound is repeated. Let's look at another example. And fair over the French flood, Felix Brutus. In this sentence the F sound is repeated four times. Just like Beowulf, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight has an oral origin. Traces of that oral origin can be found on line 30, where the poet says so listen a little while to my tale, if you will, and I will tell it as it is told in the town where it trips from the tongue. This shows us that literature was mostly used to be narrated rather than to be read individually. The poem is written in stanzas. Each stanza consists of around 25 lines in total, but those 25 lines can be further subdivided. Every stanza opens with 20 alliterative lines and closes with 5 shorter lines. Let's take a look at those five shorter sentences. Let's take for example these lines. You can see that they follow the rhyme scheme A, B, A, B, A. But you also notice that the first of these lines is remarkably shorter and contains just one stress. This line is called the bob. The other four lines are longer and have three stresses. Those are called the wheel. This division counts for every stanza in the poem. Now, a romance is usually comprised out of three parts, and we can also find them in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. The story normally opens at the court, where there is unity and everything is alright. That's what we call the state of integration. But then something happens to disrupt the unity. In this case, the Green Knight comes in. The order is upset, and then we move into the second part, the state of disintegration. And usually one court member is set out and goes on a long quest. And while he's exiled, he also, he also undergoes a psychological evolution. And then there is a third part at the end of the poem, when the knight returns home and unity is restored. The story opens in Camelot, where the entire court of King Arthur is gathered to feast. But suddenly a gigantic figure, entirely green, rides into the hall. He insists that he has come to play a friendly Christmas game. Someone has to strike him once with his axe, on the condition that the Green Knight may return the blow in one year and a day. King Arthur himself is prepared to accept the challenge, but Sir Gawain, the youngest of Arthur's knights, asks for the honor instead. The giant bends and bears his neck before him, and Gawain neatly beheads him in one stroke. The Green Knight reaches out and picks up his beheaded head. He reminds Gawain that the two must meet again at the Green Chapel, in one year and a day, and then he leaves.
The year passes and soon Gawain sets out to seek the Green Chapel. On his way he comes across a splendid castle where he meets Bertilek, the lord of the castle. Bertilek tells him that the path to the Green Chapel is just two miles away. Gawain still has some days left until the meeting, so he rests at the castle with Bertilek. Before going hunting the next day, Bertilek proposes a bargain. He will give Gawain whatever he catches on the condition that Gawain gives him whatever he might gain during the day. And Gawain accepts. And after Bertilek leaves, Lady Bertilek visits Gawain's bedroom and behaves seductively. But despite her best efforts, he yields nothing but a single kiss in his unwillingness to offend her. When Bertilek returns and gives Gawain the deer he has killed, his guest gives him a kiss without divulging its source. The next day the story repeats itself, but now Gawain gives Bertilek two kisses. On the third day, Gawain is kissed three times by Lady Bertilek, but she also gives him her green girdle. She assures that the belt is charmed and will keep him from all physical harm. Gawain takes the girdle, but keeps it hidden from Bertilek, so he breaks the bargain. The day of the meeting finally arrives, and Sir Gawain goes to the Green Chapel, where he finds the Green Knight, waiting to deliver his blow. Two times the Green Knight holds back his blow, accusing Sir Gawain that he flinched. The third time he really strikes, but just slightly injures Gawain. Then the Green Knight reveals himself to be Bertilek, and that everything had been planned to test Gawain's honor. Gawain has passed the test, but also failed a little because he broke the bargain for not telling Bertilek about the girdle he had gained. Gawain has to wear the green girdle as a token of shame, 